Good morning, kids, and today we're checking out a brand new video from True Green 7 where he redesigns Pokemon he made as a little kid. Let's hop in and see these cute little mons. Hmm. Hey guys, Ron here, and many years ago I made a video where I showcased a lot of fake mon I made way before I made my channel. These were designed when I was between the age of 13 and 17. But that oh. video was odd, because I didn't really do anything with it. I didn't redesign <laughs> any of the Pokemon I showed you guys or anything. But now that I've been making fake mon on this channel for a couple of years, I'm going to retread this concept a little differently. How about I show you a bunch of fake mon I made when I was a literal child, not a teenager. Why not? Designs I drew between the age of 7 and 11. And then I'll pick a couple of the ones that stuck oh. out to me and redesign them. But keep in mind, it's not like... Oh, okay, so we'll get in the Pokemon he made as a actual kid. Okay. Many of these have actually good concepts. In fact, most of them are knockoffs of existing Pokemon. But what will be interesting and fun will be attempting to infuse some of these drawings with actual <laughs> inspirations and genuine concepts to showcase my growth, and to show you guys that even a child can create a cool character. So please, leave a like and subscribe if you want this to become a series. But just like how I'm going to show it you guys all fun. these old designs in one video, today's sponsor, Squarespace, is the all-in-one website platform. Whether you're a blogger... We're going to take a small cut, and we're back. Can't wait. Now, when I was a kid, I drew most of the fake mon inside these notebooks. I'm not going to show you every fake mon. We want to save a couple for a potential part two, after all. Ooh. But here is book number one. You'll notice how these Pokemon don't really have concepts. Tygon is cute and all, but what even is it? It becomes Ty eye but I can't say what Ty eye is. Just an Damn. ice steel monster. But as you can see, then it devolves into literal bootleg Pokemon. This was during Gen 3. I love me some Hoenn <laughs> yeah, right, legendaries. Baseball, the but then Miko here cuts through the plagiarism. I literally don't know what Miko is, but I love him. I don't know Zorachi. if I can redesign him because he literally has no concept whatsoever. What is Miko? He's the mascot of this potential series. How about any artist watching this, if you want to redesign Miko, post it on Twitter and tag me, I guess, because I'm not hmm. going to redesign him. But then we're right back that. to plagiarism. Some seahorses and some ground types that absorb and dig. Some bugs. Like, that's the concept. Just <laughs> beetles. Coral. You'll see a lot of sea serpents, since they're the easiest to draw. Look at this tiny larvin. It's just, it's just a magnet, <laughs> honestly. And Saf Gem, is, it's, it's a sapphire with eyes. Dolphus is pretty handsome, okay. <laughs> not gonna lie. Pretty good drawing for that age. And I loved how it evolved into a shark. Forskfin was the goat. Okay, hmm. now I'm kind of realizing the name is kind of oh, sus. This is literally fin. just the Hariyama line. <laughs> Oh my god, look at Pino! It's Pino! So but next to the obvious blast toys is this Chinchow and Lantern knockoff. But what's cool hmm. is that the final evolution is this sun with like 20 antennas. I like the idea That's of a friendly cool. sun Pokemon. We have Sol Rock, but what if there was a Pokemon that represented the entire solar system? This Sundose guy kind of reminds me of a solar system model. Oh, so how yeah. about instead of a sun with antenna that. rays, I create a gem that represents the sun that is surrounded by a bunch of other gems that represent planets, all situated on a space rock. So for some of those, we we're making sure it's not flat anymore. It's got depth. The face is a big gem <laughs> in the middle attached to the main rock with tiny gems laid out as if they were planets orbiting a sun gem in the middle. I'm incorporating the spherical mm. nose, but trying to take inspiration from classical drawings of the sun with a human face. But I don't want it to be a literal human eye. I added stars in the eyes and instead oh. of patterns beneath the eyes, these lines that'll tie into the lines that I will add on the rock later. I decided that instead of tiny hands, it'll have crystal spikes coming out of it, like the rays of a sun, but in order to make it look more cosmic and otherworldly, I actually returned the eyes to the original triangle shape and gave it these lines that look like the mask of a cosmic warrior, like Ultraman, but also alluding to the That's eyebrows good. of the sun with the face drawing I was talking about before. I added lines that represent the path the planets take around the sun, but honestly, I didn't want this thing to look like a cell, and I wanted to make it a little bit more obvious that this guy was a meteor from space, so I thought it would be interesting if the back of the rock was jagged with a completely flat face, almost as if it, there, this was a meteor that was cut in half. Oh, I was just about to say it's like some kind of opened the meteor right yeah i was just revealing this pokemon the and thing. various gems inside the meteor it basically launches itself at opponents with its face almost like it's a, a battering ram. just refining the gems so they have uh, some kind of order i even added these star-like patterns on its rock you know how you sometimes pick up a rock and notice that it's all glittery mm -hmm. that's kind of what this is alluding to I want the rock to represent the night sky and the gems as celestial bodies. The colors are obvious, but I do want to make sure you can basically tell which gems represent Earth and Jupiter. Obviously not an accurate size. I didn't even <laughs> want it to look too it's specifically fine. like our solar system. The shading really helps you understand how the sun gem is more translucent than the other gems. They glow with light. Say hi to this gem. 
the charge Pokemon, a rock Ooh. and electric type from System and Gem. Yep. This friendly Pokemon have been observed to fall from the sky. Scientists believe they come from outer space, looking for a source this of electricity. Good. They charge into opponents, merrily bashing them with the front of their face at full force. The <laughs> oh. main gem in the center appears to be the face. Okay, now hold on. I do like this, but that whole bashing someone in the face with their face kind of throws in a little bit of a creep factor. Not it glows it. so brightly that at times it's tough to look at. The gems that orbit it glow in a pattern as it communicates. They have the abilities levitate and galvanize, and their shiny is golden. God, does it feel good to give a rock electric type levitate? Say thank you, guys. <laughs> Honestly, I love the shape of this Pokemon. You never get a rock type with such a clean, flat cut in the rock. It's satisfying. It's a really happy it and appealing Pokemon, good. but you can easily see how getting hit with one would really hurt. And the small face contrasts well with the rest of the relatively big body. It's a big rock. Cute, but clearly powerful. I love it. Cute, but powerful. Oop. We'll be right back, we gone add. And we're back with book two. What kind of design when I was like eight years old, I think. We got some shelled hamsters that become spiky shelled dogs, ghosts, and then this weird family that stemmed from the fact that as a kid, I think I thought fur it evolved into Sentrip. So I made this Sentrip Pikachu fusion that evolves into <laughs> this thing. But the star of the show was Bear Pass. This was the Pikachu of all my fake mon, the mascot. Ooh. Just, just, just this edgy guy. I redesigned bell. this thing, but I actually gave it an even cooler evolution later on. Perhaps we'll redesign that one instead. So keep your eyes peeled. These birds are cool. They could be contenders, honestly. But I think this line of Pokemon based on winter <laughs> coats are my favorite so far. I could redesign a Phallus? Unfortunate name. I think it's Phallas, oh, wow. like <laughs> Fat Alaskan. This is a top contender because I kind of mm. know how I can redesign this one. But let's finish the book. I'm skipping through a bunch yeah, that I can save book. for a potential part two. But that won't happen unless you absolutely love this video. So leave a like. Oh, this yeah, is this a bird is that good. gains a shell. I was obsessed with giving things shells as a kid for some reason. Okay, I remember <laughs> designing this one after the season finale of book one of Avatar The Last Airbender premiered. It's inspired by the Koizilla in the season finale. Oh, but yeah. Clicker, I remember which evolved that. into Corkinut was my jam as a kid. I loved Corkinut. Corkinut is perfect in every way. <laughs> it honestly would look creepy if recreated, but you know what? I'm still thinking about Phallus. How about we create this furry being that has a coat made of ice blocks, like an igloo? The coat will be inspired by mm. puffy North Face jackets fused with Inuit garb as well. Just a big boy with a big coat. Nothing better. Now, All right, Phallus's let's do shape this. and pose will be similar since I think that's kind of the appeal. Just a big static guy. But you'll notice the tiny feet. That implies that this Pokemon is actually relatively skinny and simply has a big coat of fur with an even bigger layer of snow blocks attached to it. But first, let's focus on the face. Instead of a big clown nose, I'll make it long and blocky. Still a big nose to be faithful. It won't be necessarily <laughs> mad, but it ain't overjoyed. It's just vibing in the cold. Its not eyes mad, will be slits inspired by snow either. goggles and the patterns on its belly are inspired by Inuit coats. I want it to have various markings so it looks relatively tribal. Mm. Instead of the long ponytail, which was simply a copy of Hariyama's tassels, I interpreted it as a feather-like frills attached to the ridge of the nose. But once I added oh, the yeah. puffy jacket hood, I began interpreting this guy as a puffy lion. Leaning into the feline aspects helped make this Pokemon look a bit less like a human later on in the design process. But before finishing the face, I want to add the segments on the jackets. It's wearing blocks of snow, so it looks like a moving igloo. But the configuration makes it look like a thick <laughs> North Face jacket. Finally giving it the face of a this lion and showcasing these dogs. After refining it, I want to make sure it's clear that under the layer of snow blocks is heavy fur. Fixing it up before adding the icy colors, the face, hands, and feet almost look like uh, they're frostbitten, <laughs> while the name and body showcases the natural brown fur of this beast. Just desaturating Love it to it. make it uh, look cooler in the color temperature sense. Check out Igloom, the insulated Pokemon, a Ooh. nice normal type from Igloo and Loom. Both the machine that's used, you know, in clothes making, but also something that is great and impending. Igloom live in the most extreme environments. They a prime example of that would be when uh, the Moon Lord is summoned in Terraria. Uh, it says uh, uh, impending doom is looming or something. Tense snowstorms with their nose and migrate before meeting one. Their soft mane and long body fur completely protects them from the cold. Blocks of snow accumulate on the top of Igloom, forming a protective coat. In battle, Igloom tanks a flurry of punches before swiping at its opponents with impressive force that can slice glaciers. They protect Whoa. their cubs by encasing them inside their coats. If other Aww. Pokemon are caught in a blizzard, Igloom will invite them into their coat to weather the storm. Their tiny legs are able to carry the weight of their multiple coats. However, speed is sacrificed in the process. They have the ability <laughs> Snow Cloak and Thick Fat with an ability Ice Body. 
It's so slow, but it's so warm and puffy. Her shiny appears to be even more cold. It was really fun incorporating real life inspirations into this Pokemon. When you're a kid, you don't realize how many cultural and biological origins Pokemon have, so it was pretty tight fleshing out each detail. Oh yeah, now that's really Now I was gonna really show you good. guys book three, but how about I save that for a potential part two? This video may flop yeah, okay. and the secrets of book three may never be known, but book four still exists. These were designs I made at the age of nine, 10, or 11, I believe. Let's check them out. Still a lot of bootleg Pokemon. <laughs> Magic Even man. this line, which seems to be original, is just inspired by Agron. I just love the name of these two Pokemon, <laughs> Stegly and Otegly. Okay, oh my god, I thought I got over the whole copying Pokemon as I went into 4th and 5th grade, but these are still blatantly copied. Skipping Motto over a bunch. <laughs> this otter line is pretty sick though. However, again, they have no concepts. This is literally just a realistic cicada. Swallow Walla <laughs> is pretty cool, and it evolves into Dijojo, because it digests. I did like Obel. But there he is, Bear Slash, the evolved form of Bear Pass. Hey. This was the goat. Literally, I'm gonna take him, make him a little bit less like the creation of what an 11 year old thinks is cool, and make the mountain goat aspects a bit more clear. Yeah, here we go. Oop. But we got an ad. And we're back. Let's go. I'm starting out there by making go. my man more obviously goat like. The pose will be tough to come up with since the original Bear Slash has literally no pose, it's just a straight line. I guess the <laughs> message I was trying to yeah, convey with the original straight. art was as if we were snapping a picture of this guy in the wild. It doesn't want you to be there, it's uncomfortable. But goddamn, are these sharp arms hard to pose. I think I will settle with a more <laughs> animalistic posture since it's already looking hella humanoid. That's why I wanted the legs to be full on satyr legs. The hair will stay. While I don't want it to be incredibly edgy, it still dabbles in edginess. I thought of uh, <laughs> giving it uh, this eyeshadow pattern. A horn would be appropriate for a goat, and will be a neat way to interpret Bear Slash's pointy pinhead. The eyeshadow took some time, and to finally make it a goat, a fitting nose was added. But the original patterns on Bear Slash's face are completely inconsistent. We have triangles, lightning bolt scars, and some kind of trapezoid around the eyes. Let's connect them and make them look less on the nose. After all, the got some kind of weird like flame thing going on in the arm. Lightning bolt makes no sense at all. I mean, it's not electric type, and making it look like a scar would simply give it the look of a Zankus, which I've been copying <laughs> a bit too much lately. So instead, I gave it these connected patterns that allude to the original lightning bolt scar, but look way more natural and less like a 10-year-old's idea of cool. Although I still think facial scars are pretty cool. I translated oh, yeah, the neck no fur and extended it to the chest. I'm flipping it to notice any mistakes in the anatomy, although there will always be problems. Literal goat hooves with sharp ones instead of hands, translating the fire patterns I gave it into something less flame related. Oh. The colors were always purple, black, and white in my mind. It'll be fun to see how you guys interpreted the colors of these fake mon before seeing them in the colors I imagined since childhood. Also, Last that minute I decided to go like all in with some goat green. eyes so it doesn't look like a wolf. You this know, is Bear Slash, the loner Pokemon, a dark type from Beard and Slash. These Pokemon are extremely solitary to the point that they are are one of the hardest to train. They are not necessarily uncivilized, but will often refuse to battle despite their impeccable aptitude for it. Their rock hard claws Damn. are used for climbing vertical cliffs in order to isolate themselves. Bear Slash run away from sudden noises and lights. There exists folklore from hundreds of years in the past about how Bear Slash are actually ostracized humans who were banished for dishonoring their families and slowly turned feral. For centuries, this Pokemon Whoa. was one of the last to be trained. The only known method of befriending Bear Slash is by raising it since birth usually after its egg is abandoned. These trained Bear Slash only interact well, with their damn. trainer though. They have the abilities Tough Claws and Sap Zipper. Their shiny is green for obvious reasons since we're kind of indulging in childhood Ron's interests. Hmm. I think I managed to make a more mature oh, okay. version of what I originally imagined. I know a lot of you guys would have wanted me to indulge in the edginess of the original and basically keep every element, but while I tried to make it look less dated, I simply had fun translating every detail into something that I believed made way more sense. This was literally the mascot of that all the fake really one good. I made as a kid, so it's crazy to see it look more realistic. It's like meeting your imaginary friend. All right, Let's finish off more. with some more designs from book four. Again, skipping some cool designs to save for later. Barbit was designed the week <laughs> Steve Irwin died, so I can kind of date these designs now. Now, two wasp is, uh, <laughs> oh, I'm not going to even say it. Macabrash is a bit scary. I see it. Oh, hmm. there is Bay Scratch, the baby form of the Bear Slash line. Kind of like Magby and oh. Alicate. The rest is yet to come, but for now, I'm thinking of revisiting Bekaja. I don't know, that name is nothing. 
that whatever. <laughs> As a kid, I just thought Pokemon names were gibberish, so these names make no sense. It was kind of a mind-blowing experience when I, I realized every Pokemon bad. had a reason for its name. <laughs> I picked this one because I want to see how I can stray away from the Pikachu inspiration. With these patterns, I'm thinking of making an electric mammal that not only has flashy powers, but is literally flashy, with blinding lights on its body. Not just its cheeks, like Pikachu. So we're going to try our best to cheeks, make a Pokemon everything. inspired by Pikachu, but have a completely different concept. I mean, it's not a Pikachu clone, but rather Pikachu-shaped. It'll be super mm. uncanny having a Pokemon with a Pikachu silhouette, but up close, it's a completely different Pokemon. It happens in the real <laughs> world. The separate head pattern surrounding a smaller face is directly from my original sketch. I decided to adopt a similar pose. This thing is flashy and obnoxious, not timid, so it's displaying itself. Again, <laughs> I'm literally mimicking the same patterns. This will be an exercise in trying to keep every... Uh, what people would call it would be loud every detail but imbuing meaning into them when i was a kid i just thought the patterns looked cool this time i'm gonna give them purpose i believe that they'll glow and honestly they should have an epilepsy warning huh uh -oh. you know you know porygon has was banned from the anime because of the infamous episode yeah but we all know it was actually you know pikachu that caused the strobing effects something to yeah. think about when designing this pokemon but instead of being insensitive and making this <laughs> the seizure pokemon i think these flashy patterns will instead be part of an x-ray theme you know how in cartoons when someone is zapped, you see their skeleton for a second? What if mm -hmm. these patterns mimic this trope? Since the original drawing uh, was a centric Pikachu hybrid, I gave my new version some brown, but to sell the entire x-ray look, blue felt better. I even changed oh, yeah, the spot into good. a heart to make it look more translucent. It isn't, it's just a pattern, but it has meaning. Unlike the original dot, the original has a blatant Pikachu tail ripoff, so instead this guy has a bushy tail that glows and looks like a blast of electricity <laughs> instead of a thunderbolt. I gave it pastel medical cute. colors, like a nurse's scrub. But what if it was so flashy that it came in multiple colors, as if it was an exaggeration of the corporate mascot Pikachu is? Kind of like Pikachu representing the music genre of pop. And this Pokemon representing hyperpop, basically an obnoxious exaggeration of yeah. pop. Can you tell that I don't like hyperpop? Say, <laughs> okay. say hi to Usenko, the flashing Pokemon, an electric type from the Japanese words for rabbit and flash. Usenko's tail Ooh. crackles loudly as its body flashes. Its presence is always known. This proud Pokemon loves to be seen. It walks with such confidence and doesn't pay mind to people and Pokemon that disapprove of its <laughs> loud and bright existence. It doesn't hide any aspect of it. I can imagine this thing doing that Dr. Liver whatever walk. <laughs> itself. It never Full lies chest. and will show its affection to those it loves. In battle, it blinds its opponents before leaping onto them, making full contact as they shock their foe. The electromagnetic beams that are released during its attacks leave imprints of its foe on the ground. It has the abilities Illuminate, Volt Absorb, and the hidden ability Galvanize. While its power and design take inspiration from Pikachu, <laughs> I think I managed to create a new concept simply by exaggerating aspects of Pikachu. Completely. Like its insane electrical powers and constant appearance in Pokemon media. And if you enjoyed this piece of media, leave a like and subscribe if you want to see a part two. <laughs> Make sure to check the description for the music I use, the t-shirts I made for you guys, and my Patreon where you can get cool rewards like seeing my videos days early, which you can also do by clicking the join button mm -hmm. and becoming a member. Make sure to follow me on... Well, folks, that's going to be the end of today's episode. I hope you all enjoyed this moment of like, comment, and subscribe for more. Link to the original will be in the description below. And I'll see all you folks next time when we flick on. Peace out.